everyone and welcome once again to Checkpoint. That's right. I'm excited to be in your face again. And today, as usual, I'd like to start by saying thank you, thank you, and thank you again to every one of you who make Checkpoint what it is. As a matter of fact, there is no Checkpoint without you. And I'd like to say thank you for all that you do for us here at Checkpoint. And because of all that you do, our message is reaching a wider audience. So thank you, thank you, and thank you again. Now you know how we roll at Checkpoint. Now is the time for you to begin to invite your friends, your relations, your associates, and your neighbors. Let them know that Checkpoint is already on. And it's your host again, Pastor Dr. Ifoma Eze. And I'll be sharing with you wonderful, wonderful tips that will help you to become a better version of yourself never lose sight of what we do here at checkpoint at checkpoint we make sure that we equip empower and educate you with information that would help you to become a better version of yourself and what are you waiting for please go out, out and invite as many people as you can share the link share the link and share the link again on all your whatsapp contacts let them know it is time for checkpoint and as they begin to join i am sure they would get value just like you have always gotten value is your host again dr ifoma eze and i'm really excited to be with you right now now don't go anywhere because after the break i will be sharing with you the topic for today's video you will enjoy it today's topic is beautiful and i can't wait to share it with you don't go anywhere. All right, and welcome right back to Checkpoint. I'm truly excited for all that has happened here at Checkpoint. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of social reports, praise reports. People are excited with their testimonies, things that have happened in their lives as a result of watching or listening to checkpoint and your story can be just like the story of millions of others who also watch this program you can watch it you can listen to it whichever way is convenient for you but what is most important is that you are getting value the right value that you should be getting from a program such as this so today on checkpoint i'll be sharing with you eight qualities your boss is looking out for in you eight qualities your boss is looking out for in you i know some of you are like the ogre pata pata, like the ogre at the top but listen to me I, everyone has uh, a boss in some way uh, or the other in some way either at work either uh, in your place of business so this is important everyone who wants to work with you will be looking out for these same qualities and as we begin to extract these qualities one after the other, I'd like you to take a very cursory look at yourself and ask yourself, in what way? In what way do I need to improve? In what way do I need to get better? In what way do I need to up my game so that I can become the person that I should be? Remember that in life, we're not talking about competition against anybody. This competition is with your former self you versus who you used to be you want to be a better person you want to be uh, a more authentic person you want to be somebody who is upgraded in value and in content this is your pathway so i'll be sharing with you today eight qualities your boss is looking out for in you so for all of you who have bosses ahead of you what have you started to ask yourself what does my boss really want from me what does he want to see what is that thing that my boss would see and then i'll get a promotion what is that thing that my boss will see and then my business will be enriched all right i'll have more contacts and connection what is that thing that my boss will see and then i'll become i'll become what i truly am supposed to be right so if you're asking this question this episode is for you this episode will enlighten your mind on the qualities that you need to possess in order to become the very very person that you need to be are you ready for this let's do it together all right so number one quality that your boss is looking out for is the quality called integrity integrity is uh, a lifter integrity is a blesser integrity 
is a distinguisher. When you are a person of integrity, what happens in your life looks miraculous simply because you are a person of integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is your being your true self the same way you would have been in public even when no one is watching. Integrity is being your authentic self, being your truthful self. All right? It doesn't matter who is watching you. It, it doesn't matter who is rewarding you. It doesn't matter if the place is in public or in private. When you're a person of integrity, what happens? What happens to you is that you are your genuine self irrespective of who is watching people commonly say that integrity is who you are when nobody's watching you but you can be a bad person in the private right you can be a bad person even in private places so that definition maybe does not cut it for me but one thing i know is that integrity is being your genuine truthful authentic self even when nobody's watching even when nobody chooses to reward you even when nobody chooses to applaud you, you are being your genuine, truthful, and authentic self. And that is what integrity is. It was one of the richest men in the world that said that beyond choosing somebody who is gifted and talented and skillful in their work, choose somebody who has integrity. Because the person who has integrity will learn skills and be faithful with those skills. That same person will have abilities and be able to give you something that makes you go back home at night and sleep. Are you a person of integrity? As, as we reflect on this, ask yourself this very pertinent question. Are you a person of integrity? Who are you when no one is watching? Who are you behind social media? Who are you when people are not looking at you? When people can't see you? What is the kind of life that you live in secret? Are you somebody who says yes and keeps to your word? Are you somebody who says yes and then does not keep to your word? What kind of person are you? Any boss, anywhere in the world, who wants to be able to count on somebody that they work with. They want to be sure that this person is a truthful person, that this person is a sincere person, that this person will not cheat on them, this person will not dupe the business, this person will say what he means and mean what he says. So if you are working anywhere and you have not displaying, you have not been displaying this character of integrity, it is high time you started. Because you want to make a difference. Because you want your boss to notice you. Because you want to get that promotion. Because you want to advance in your career. Because you want the favor of your boss to be on you. That is why you need to be a person of integrity. Number two, number two um, quality that your boss is looking out for in you is the quality of skillfulness. Skillfulness. What then is skillfulness? Skillfulness is your ability to do the work. It doesn't matter what field, it doesn't matter what area, it doesn't matter what aspect of business. Or skilled involved you know what to do and you can do it so well you know what to do you can do it so what I be in, in the aspect of a technology you can handle that technology so well you know what to do if you be in the aspect of administration you can handle administration so well that you know what to do to make things to work out skillfulness there is no boss that hires you because of the nice look on your face there is no boss that hires you because you look like you're going to make sense. There's no boss that hires you because they are just your family members. That's nepotism or friends. Every boss that wants to hire wants to hire you based on the fact that you're going to be skillful at what you are doing. Many believers assume that skillfulness does not matter. That what matters is your spirituality. And um, while I am somebody who emphasizes very strongly on spirituality, there is wisdom for you to know that you, despite your spirituality, you cannot compromise on the issue of skillfulness. You need to know that with your spirituality, please add skillfulness. And that is how you go far. And that is how you excel. 
and that is how you become the very best version of yourself don't assume that people will hire you just because you're a christian don't assume that people will hire you just because you love god and you know god no they want to see you do the work they want to see that you are able to do the work over the years i had several experiences with believers especially you know because they are brothers in christ and sisters in christ they assume that they don't need to really put in professionalism in the work i have given them to do so some of them you give them work a, a job to do and at the end of the day the job turns out very shabby very messed up with high level of mediocrity and they expect you to accept it like that simply because you are a believer simply because you are a mother in the lord you shouldn't complain you shouldn't worry about it and i have always worried about it in fact there was a time that came in my life i started saying i will never employ somebody or, or 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 give a contract out to somebody who is just a believer unbelievers have some level of professionalism and skillfulness because they know that's all they can count on but we believe that we abuse our faith so much the fact that you're a lover of God does not mean you, have to, you don't have to be skillful. We abuse our relationship with God. We assume that because we have God, we can afford not to spend time on the project. We can afford not to uh, impute our best. We can afford not to be professional about the business or the career that we have found ourselves in. And eventually, when we fail, we begin to cry to God. We begin to make it look like it's God's fault. We begin to judge God unfaithful. Why would you do that? It is wisdom for you to know that skillfulness is key. Skillfulness matters. Even the Bible says, seest thou a man who is diligent in his business. The Bible says he will stand before kings and royalty, not before mean men. That's what the word of God says. The Bible says in Isaiah that kings and queens shall come to the brightness of your rising. They will not come to your prayer, to the loudness of your prayer. They will not come to the lengthy reading of your Bible. They will come to the brightness of your rising. So which means that no matter what you do, you have to intentionally and deliberately sharpen your skills. The same Bible said that when a knife is not sharpened, you exert a lot of pressure to use it. Many of us are like that on sharpened knife. And we expect God to do everything. Can I tell you that any religion that believes that God has to do everything and man has to do nothing is an irresponsible religion. And Christianity is not like that. Christianity is one religion that believes that there is a partnership between God and man. Even God lamented and cried out that I have sought for a man, just one man, that will, that, that will bridge the gap that will stand in the gap between me and those people. And I saw for that man and I could not find. God is consistently, all the time, looking for human beings, men and women, boys and girls, you and I, who will stand in the gap. But we need to know what to do. The fact that you're a believer does not mean you should uh, uh, deliver mediocre jobs. Spirituality is not synonymous with mediocrity can i say that again spirituality is not synonymous with what mediocrity spirituality is not synonymous with mediocrity the fact that you are spiritual does not mean you should be exhibiting mediocrity on a consistent basis we have to go back to the drawing board we have to go back and look inward and ask ourselves what are we doing why are we doing what we are doing can't we be better at this? Can't we improve? Can't we improve on our game? Can't we do it better? Can't we do it exceptionally? You see the carpentry work, the woodwork or furniture work of a, of a believer looking shattered, looking messed up. There are no alignments. And then they expect you to accept it like that because you are a brother in the Lord or a sister in the Lord. This has happened to me over time. But eventually I learned that there, can, there are some believers who are also exceptional at their work. So I stopped taking their spirituality for it. And I started looking deeper into their skillfulness. You too can be that one. People are tired. This generation is not patient with mediocrity. They fought it. 
they look at it and they say no 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 we cannot have this and that is why you have to do better that is why you have to gather yourself together and make sure that your competence level is high make sure that your skillfulness will speak for you this is something that is very key and i hope you get something from it because another quality that your boss will be looking out for in you is skillfulness now let's talk about number three number three quality that your boss will be looking out for in you is creativity i must sincerely tell you that there are people that are like wheelbarrows you know wheelbarrow <laughs> when you carry a wheelbarrow when you move it to a certain distance and you drop it it remains there till you exert another pressure till you exert another force you will never see the wheelbarrow shift or move or do anything else except remain where it has been kept there are people who work with others and they are like the wheelbarrow no innovation no improvement no advancement no creativity creativity is so important every boss wants to see the, his employee his employee become creative every boss wants to see her employee become creative how are you creative with the assignments you have been given what are you doing to make that assignment better to make that assignment speak more to make that assignment become more productive what are you doing i just relaxing and saying oh uh they've given me work i know my job description i'm just going to focus on it no every boss will be so delighted to see you being what creative in the assignments you have been given you can change colors you can switch the concepts you can add more people there are several and tons of ways to make every single assignment that you have received creative. But it starts from here. You have to tell yourself, in as much as this is not my business, in as much as this is not mine, my institution, I am going to do everything in my power to make sure that my creativity blows up here. And what then happens when your creativity blows up? You see that you begin to bring out creative ideas concepts that never existed before strategies that are unique and highly productive simply because you chose to be creative don't be like that wheelbarrow that wherever it is kept it remains there if you have an assignment you have been given to by your superior if you have an assignment you'll be given to by your boss the least you can do is to go over and above to make sure that that assignment speaks to make sure that you bring something powerful and wonderful out of that assignment, to make sure that you, the, the level of productivity is higher, better. That's what creativity does. Creativity does not have to be brand new. It might even be new ways of doing old things. The same old thing you have been doing over time, you receive inspiration from the Almighty. And all of a sudden, you begin to bring dimensions and spheres to the same thing you have been asked to do this time doing it with better results doing with it with greater results and that's what creativity is all about who said that as it was the beginning it is so now so shall it ever continue to be world without end in your career in your business in your institution no it doesn't have to be like that the times are changing people are learning new ways of doing all things and they are prospering for it and they're getting better for it and this is why i am a strong advocate to creativity for creativity you have to sit down and make sure your creative juices are up and then if you're somebody who is very creative but for a while you have you seem to be out of touch with your creativity you need to go to a place that inspires you any place that brings those creative things creative juices back alive that's what you need to do if you need to listen to some songs, go ahead and listen to some songs. Something smooth, something soft, something that can trigger all your wonderful creative juices. But by all means, be creative. Don't be a very dull person. Don't be a very stagnant person. Nobody likes a stagnant person, right? Everybody likes that person who is like the life of the room, who comes in and makes everything better with creative ideas. So you too can be that creative one, all right? All right, okay. so let me talk about number four. 
Number four quality that your boss is looking out for in you is the quality of a team player. Your boss wants to know that you are not a lone wolf. Nobody wants to employ a lone wolf. Every employee, employer wants to employ uh, a team player, somebody who can network well with the team. And I always tell the people around me this. When you, when you team up with others, you achieve more. When you team up with others, you do much more than you ever plan to do. You're, you are only as great as your team. You are only as important as your team. You are only as powerful as your team. So my question to you now is this. Who are your team members? You need to be a team player if you want to have team members. People who will give your life for you. People who will stand by you. People who will make sure that, that your vision that you have received does not die prematurely. And that's it. That's just it. You need to be a team player. Because you can't do anything without people. There is no vision that is from God that only you can handle. Mm -mm. It doesn't happen that way. Whenever God calls you, gives you an assignment, there are people he would always surround you with. When he called Moses, he gave him Aaron. Aaron and Ho, they were right there with him. He was never alone. When God also called Moses to build um, the tabernacle, he gave him Bezaliel and Aholiab. These were men who, the Bible says, they were skillful in all manner of stones. They could design anything. They were highly skillful. Well, this was the called one. But he couldn't have built anything tangible without Bezaliel and Aholiab. He needed them to be able to build. You should be a team player. Jesus came here on earth. Despite the fact that he was the son of God, he didn't go ahead to do every work by himself. He didn't go ahead to do everything by himself. What did he do? He chose the 12 disciples who were part of his team. And with them, he was able to achieve greater things simply because he worked with his team. Stop staying away from your team. All these sentiments, my team don't, members don't like me, my team members hate me, my team members don't encourage me, my team members are goofy, my team members are this or that, it's not going to help you. You complain about so many people's faults and you assume that you two do not have any fault of yours, is that it? Every one of us are ridiculed with faults. Every one of us, even the very best of us. But then... We just make up our minds to work with people who are also willing to work with us. And when you, you, you point out people's faults and error, don't point it out as if you are holier than them, as if you are better than them, as if you are more resourceful than them. No. Treat them as your team members. Sometimes go all out and care for people. Every time you must not be demanding and collecting stuff from people. Sometimes give. You get blessed, more blessed by giving. Even the Bible says that blessed is he that, is, is he that giveth more than he that taketh. You get more blessed. Don't keep asking people for their hand when you have not touched their heart. You need to learn how to touch the heart of people. I know you are a super boss and stuff like that, but please be nice to people, be kind to people, especially people who are members of your team. If your team members decide to destroy you, you are finished. Because there are the people who are always around you. And while I understand that there are people who are so wicked and mean, that no matter the level of help you give to them, no matter the kind of kindness you show them, they will still look for ways to hurt you. Those kind of people, you pray them into hell. You pray them away from your life because you do not deserve that level of heart and pain. Even Jesus said, gather unto me all those who will not bow down and let me destroy them. You can't pamper people who do not look out for your welfare. You can't pamper people who do not want to see you succeed. They are called witches and you must not suffer a witch to live. Now, while you cannot go out there and destroy or wound people physically, it is wisdom that you know that you can pray to God and God can handle them for you. God can take care of them for you. 
because the battle is not yours the battle is his he knows how to fight your battle so that notwithstanding learn how to work with your team learn how to be an, a wonderful engaged team player engage with people engage with them speak with them talk with them relate with them don't have this high-minded superiority complex over anybody you are not really that powerful as you think mm -hmm. all right so let's talk about another quality that your boss is looking out for in you that's number five quality and it's called resourcefulness resourcefulness what then is resourcefulness resourcefulness is your ability to use existing resources to achieve your goals the ability to use what you have in order to get what you want the ability to use what you have in order to achieve the assignment that has been given to you so my question for you is this how resourceful are you how resourceful are you are you the type that complains about everything that one is not working this one is not working this one has fault and by the time anybody's trying to listen to you they are tired tired because you don't get to do the work you keep making demands you keep asking for new equipment. You keep asking for new resources. It is the delight of every boss to have that one person in your team who is highly resourceful. Who can do great things with the little things in your possession. Resourcefulness is key. Hardly will you ever find any boss. Let's go of that man or that woman who is resourceful to them. That one who can make something powerful out of practically nothing, that one will always be dear in the heart of any boss. So I want to ask you, how resourceful are you? Are you the type that will bring a long list of things that need to be bought, a long list that, of things that needs to be replaced, and you can't sit back and think, what can I do with what is in my face? What can I do with what is available right now? When you begin learn to begin to ask those kind of questions, you will see that resourcefulness will become a path and parcel of your life. You will notice that you are now doing better. You will notice that you are now your boss is now loving you. Your boss is not appreciating you. Your boss is now drawing you closer because they see you as a go-getter, somebody who gets results done. So be resourceful. The ability to achieve much with just little. The ability to achieve set goals and visions with the little or available resources on ground. This makes you exceptional. This makes you needed. This makes you appreciated. This makes you sought after. And I'm telling you because I am a boss of people and that one who is always resourceful, who is able to give me much with the little I've given, is always one that is dear to my heart. Okay? All right, so please chat with me in the comment section right now. Tell me, what have you heard so far? What have you heard so far? What value have you gotten so far? I've shared with you the qualities that your boss is looking out for. Number one, I said integrity. Number two, I said skillfulness. Number three, I said creativity. Number four, I said team player. And number five, I said resourcefulness. Now I want to go on and talk about number six. All right. Okay. So number six quality that your boss is looking out for in you is the quality called loyalty. Mm. You know, unfortunately, in this generation, we have a generation of people who are lovers of themselves, people who do not want to listen to instruction, people who do not want to feel controlled, people who do not want anybody to tell them what to do or what to think. And now we are raising a breed, an entire generation of people who are disloyal. People come to social media and they say all manner of things. People work with the boss and they say all manner of things. I need us to bring back those good old days when people used to be loyal. You know, every boss, they will choose the loyal person above the gifted person ask any boss you know if you're a boss you will tell me this is true 
every boss will always prefer the loyal person to the skillful person the loyal person to the gifted person the loyal person to the wealthy person because loyalty is a major requirement for any boss in their relationship with their subordinates what then is loyalty loyalty is an unconditional unconditional followership of a subordinate to his superior of an employee to his or her employer loyalty is a rare virtue very rare virtue very rare gift and potential that people need to work on and permit me to say that loyalty is really not a gift because nobody is given the gift of natural loyalty which means it's not inherent it's not something that you are born with it's not something that comes upon you at a certain age it is something you intentionally and deliberately grow in yourself let me say this again i've said it before every boss will prefer the loyal one to the gifted one every boss will prefer the loyal one to the skillful one every boss will prefer the loyal one to the wealthy one every boss will prefer the loyal one to the smartest one because in the long run a day comes as a leader when you look left when you look left and you look right and you look front and you look back and you want to see the set of people who are truly loyal to you around you you don't want to be in the midst of wolves and then you look around they're the skillful one they're the gifted one they're the talented one they're the very wealthy ones they're the ones that are smart and yet they are not loyal without loyalty what can a leader do it is an unconditional love unconditional dedication to a leader that's what loyalty is it has to be unconditional you believe that this person is your leader and you follow this person without no questions asked you follow this person with serious conviction because you know in your heart that this person has all it takes to take you to your next level this person has all it takes to lead you and I, uh, the ministry, the church where I belong to, we have a lot of a strong emphasis on loyalty because we know that lots and lots of things can be achieved in the midst of loyalty. Greater things can be done. Imagine yourself as a boss. Maybe you have uh, a, a different eateries or, or, or a chain of restaurants, and then you have managers who are loyal to you across all boards. They won't allow your trade secrets to be stolen. They will protect your secrets. They will ensure that the company money is used for what it should be used for. There won't be theft. There won't be money laundering and abuse of resources because you have a band of people who are loyal. One prayer you should pray every day in your life is that amongst all the people around you, amongst all the people in your space may god give you very loyal people having the loyal people in your corner is a huge blessing is it's something every leader should have many leaders look around their organization and it's difficult to find that one that is lo loyal because there's a lot of corruption but in difficult days every leader wants to look around and be sure that there is somebody who did the right thing despite how they felt. That there is somebody who did the right thing in your organization despite the inconvenience it took that person. The person was able to do the right thing. The person was able to stick with you no matter what. How many people are you sure that if today, for some reason, you are there's an allegation against you, an accusation that is not true, and you are labeled a criminal, who and who? In your life, do you think will stand by you no matter what happens? If you can answer that question, people in that category, anybody you classify and put into that category, are people you should not joke with. Because a loyal person is not stupid. That person is loyal because they love you, because they see your vision, they see your tomorrow, they see where you're going to. But loyal people are not stupid. 
you can't trivialize them because they just love you or because they care for you. So this is where I bring the balance, right? So while you want people to be loyal to you, you too need to have a way to be loyal to them because loyalty is not just a one-way street. When people are loyal to you, you should also make sure that you show them in more ways than one that you are in their corner, that you won't let them be destroyed, right? That you won't let the challenges coming to them demolish them or chase them into oblivion. You are assuring them that the same way they have stood with you, you are willing to stand with them. That's what it's all about. Do you understand everything I've shared already? All right, tell me which point um, touched you the most. Which point? made sense to you which are the points can you relate with all right so let me talk, talk uh, tell you about number seven number seven number seven quality every boss is looking out for in you is that quality of perseverance perseverance yeah perseverance is the ability to stick to hold on to remain in the game no matter how difficult it gets perseverance is you holding up, holding on, no matter how difficult it gets. It is your ability to pass through a rough time in your organization, together with your leader, and yet you did not lose your mind. We need more perseverance in this generation. This is a generation of people who say, I'm stressed, I'm emotional stressed, I can't take it anymore, and then they go and get poisonous substances to drink and kill themselves. That tenacity is no longer there. That ability to stand until the truth surfaces is no longer there. And that is why I'm telling you that your boss wants to see this. Your boss wants to know that you're with him in this thing for the long haul. You're in this business, in this institution, in this career, with him for the long run. You are not, you're not a quitter. You're not one of those people who quit when there is pressure. Who quit when things are difficult? No. Perseverance. Holding on no matter how difficult it gets. Pushing through no matter how difficult it gets. Insisting that you will survive it. Insisting that you'll be on top of it. Insisting that you'll get better. That's perseverance. And every leader wants to know that no matter how the difficult times the organization goes through, that there are a bunch of people who are steadfastly insisting that no matter what is happening, this organization must move forward. No matter what is happening, this organization must advance. No matter what is happening, this organization must be at its best. Do you have people like that in your life? Or are you that kind of person in somebody else's life? Please do let me know in the comment section so that I can relate with what you are saying so while you do that while you comment on the comment section let me know what your views are let me also know if there are things that you believe the boss should look out for in others that are not yet in my list just share go ahead and share it this is the learning curve for every one of us an opportunity for you to learn and for me myself to also learn okay so perseverance is key you know nobody loves to work with computers Nobody wants um, life to be getting difficult or career to be getting difficult or business to be difficult. And then the people that surround you are all with that. So they're advising you to quit just because things are hard, just because things are difficult. And that shouldn't be your, uh, that shouldn't be your, your decision to quit. You shouldn't make up your mind to quit simply because everybody thinks you should quit. In fact, there is no great business anywhere. There's no great leader anywhere. There's no great giant of any career of, of, of any institution anywhere who has not thought about giving up, who has not thought about quitting. But then they had a bunch of great people, capable people around them who told them that they could fight and that they could win and they could get better, they could achieve the dreams in their heart. Okay? So surround yourself with people who have perseverance, not quitters, not people who just be filled with negativity concerning whatever project it is you are handling. And as we begin to wrap up, I'd like to share with you the last one, number eight. Number eight quality uh, that your boss is looking out for in you is the, is the quality of productivity. 
productivity. What is the essence of running a business if not for productivity? Profit maximization is at the is the bane for most of the businesses that have been run, most of the institutions or organizations that have been run. People want to make profit for their money. So in, a, in, in, in that same respect, they want it to be productive, okay? They want it to be productive, and they love people who are very productive. Nobody likes anybody who keeps whiling away their time. Your boss, your employer wants to see that you are a very productive person. What does it mean to be productive? Over time, there are results to show for the time that has elapsed. That's productivity. Productivity is always related, has, is always related to time. It relates to time. Because we can't say that you are productive if you didn't do anything for one whole year and then you showed up to do something in one month in the next year. Productivity. Every leader wants to see that you are somebody who is productive at, at a very uh, high level. You, they want to see that you have, you're somebody who is able to, over time, you are, you are producing results. Over time, you are delivering results. You are meeting with targets. You're not filling a target and then expecting your boss to understand or you say, oh, I was not supposed to, I, I, I was supposed to deliver a target of 250, but boss, things are hard. Everywhere is difficult. I was only able to do 15. And you expect your boss to understand simply because your boss is a Christian. But that does not cut it. That does not cut it. You have to do what is right, irrespective of how you feel, irrespective of what's happening. Productivity. Over time, every employer wants to see what have you been able to achieve over time. What have you been able to do after this while? Because nobody wants anybody who is a time waster around them. So productivity is key. At the end, you know, some of you said, oh, I want to, this year is going to be a wonderful year. How many months have passed already? And what have you started doing already? Because before you know it, the year will wrap up like this. And then if you wonder, where did it go? So productivity is key. Ability to achieve results. Ability to meet targets. Ability to do what you set out to do. And that's it. That's it. Being productive. God, even God, looks at unproductivity with a judgmental eye. Did you not see what happened when Jesus went, was passing, and then he saw the fig tree? It, the fig tree looked like it could be productive. But when he went close, there was no single fig on it. Jesus got angry and cursed that fig, fig tree simply because the tree was unproductive. That tells you, even God frowns when you're an unproductive person, when you're a time waster, loitering around from pillar to post and achieving nothing. So these are the things that your boss will likely be looking out for in you. And now, before you meet your boss or before you go back to work, you have to understand that you have to scrutinize yourself in these areas. Number one, I said you have to, the quality that your boss is looking out for you, number one is integrity. Number two is skillfulness. Number three, is creativity number four is ability to be a team player right number five is resourcefulness you have to be very resourceful number six loyalty loyalty is a quality that your boss wants to take seriously all right number seven perseverance to be able to persevere no matter how hard it gets and number eight productivity these are the eight qualities your boss is looking out for in you and if you are somebody, you have a boss that you, are, you work with, you have a boss who is looking out for you, you have a boss that you, you do work with, it is important that you begin to reach out to them and see ways through which you can improve on any of the skills I have already mentioned. These are the few things I decided to share with you today on Checkpoint, and I hope it has been a huge blessing to you. Right now, until I come your way again, keep making a positive, indelible mark in the lives of people and on the sands of time. I love you so very much. Bye-bye for now. Mwah.
one i hope you are blessed by that message all right so i want you to just go ahead and support us if you are led go ahead and just sow into the account right on the screen and i know that as you do that god will bless you big time because of the seeds you are sowing you will be able to reach a wider audience on different platforms so please do well to sow that seed and god will bless you love you